I'm at a point where I got everything unhooked. Um, I have motor mounts loosened. I, they're just hand tight. And then I have three bolts holding in the transmission because we put the car down so that we can, uh, you know, be able to lift the engine a little bit higher to get it out. I'm gonna take the hood off. Um, <clears throat> transmission bolts, three transmission bolts are only hand tight. The two top and one bottom. Um, so what we are gonna do is just uh, pull this out today. But I did wanna go over a couple um, things you need to know. Um, this wiring horn harness that's connected to all the sensors in your car. I know it looks intimidating, but every single connector has its place. You cannot hook up anything wrong. What I did when I disconnected it was I went front to back, top to bottom. Um, one other thing you need to know is um, there are two grounds. One is on the back it's low, there's two sensors in the back um, on this that are the cam position sensors, I believe. And between them and a little bit lower is the other end of this ground. So you follow this down, make sure you undo that one. A lot of people forget it is what I was told. The other ground is right under this engine mount. You can see right there how I undid it. So make sure you get those two. Um, I'm leaving my headers on because I don't have hooks. So we're gonna strap around the headers with a toe strap. But I did crack them loose so that when the engine is out of the car, I can remove them easily. Um, let's see, what else is there? Um, um, I used a lot of, this is funny, uh, dog puppy training pads over there. I put them under my car to catch all the extra drips. That's just a little handy tip. Um, but um, everything else is, you know, remove the hoses, remove connectors. That's all pretty simple. Excuse my organized chaos here. But I got everything in bags and labeled as to where they go. Even all my O2 sensors. Um... I only had to take out the fans, the radiator fans, um, to get to the crank pulley bolt with the, um, my, my um, impact gun, because my impact gun is so big that, I mean, it, it filled up the whole space all the way to the radiator. I actually thought I was gonna damage my radiator, but I did okay. I ended these, pulled it back a little bit, and um, had enough room. Then I was able to put it back in. If you have an S550, it's only one connector and two 10 millimeter bolts. Then it just pulls right up. I'm not sure about the S197. Um, coolant hoses, I just, I pulled this one off, but I just took these and I tucked them out of the way. So it'll be easy to put everything back. Um, I'm gonna try not to remove the catch can. I think I have enough room there. I think we're fine. If it gets damaged, it's $23 on eBay. So that's not really gonna bother me. Um, with the engine I got, I had to, I gotta swap over the tensioner, the water pump pulley, which luckily the new engine I got is a three, three uh, bolt also. Thermostat housing, intake manifolds. Do, do, do. I got all of the spark plugs out. What else? There's really not much to this. It, I mean, it seemed more difficult than it really is. I was super scared, but I'm ready to go. Oh, oh you do not have to take out your AC compressor. Unbolt it, I believe it's three bolts, and just move it out of the way. These are all flexible lines, so you're not gonna damage anything. Flexible line, flexible line here, so just pull it out of the way. Then there's one more bracket down here, which, it's two, two brackets. 
for this wiring harness here that's wiggling and your trans transmission cooler lines, they get bolted to that. You gotta make sure you undo that. And of course, take your starter out. As for the starter, if you have an automatic, that's how you get to your uh, flex plate bolts. There's four of them. And I believe they're 13 millimeter, no, 15. 13 or 15, one of the two. But um, so you just give this a crank until you can see them. You can actually see them from here. You don't have to keep getting under the car. There's a little access panel you pull off. You can see where they are and you get under there and you crack them loose. So you get four of those loose. And then from there, all you gotta do is, uh, I believe, how many bolts are there? Four top bolts for the transmission. I got this labeled here. These two are actually holding in the transmission, so it's the bottom one. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine transmission bolts that you need to crack loose, and they're actually not too bad. The top ones seemed a little difficult until I realized I got all the bottom ones undone, and I'm like, oh man, how am I gonna get to the top ones? Well, you just kinda hop in your car, stand on your, uh, your sway bar, you can get all of them through the back. They're pretty easy. They're all they're all 13 millimeters. Um, the only other thing that most people find a pain in the butt is pulling the crank position sensor. The crank position sensor is. Let's see if I can see that. There's a heat shield back there. Oh, all right. The camera cut out. Let's try this again. There is a crank position sensor in the back. It's back where the flex plate is. And I believe it's back behind a flywheel also, but there is a, underneath the last tube of your headers or, in, or exhaust manifold, there is a, a heat shield. And behind that heat shield is a circular uh, uh, gasket or grommet. And so what you gotta do is you gotta get to two. There's one bolt there. And there's another one down there. You get those from the bottom. I mean, you could possibly get them to the top. I believe they're 10 millimeters. You pull that heat shield so it's swinging downwards. I don't think you could take out the bottom bolt because it's in the way of the headers if you have long tubes. Not sure about sure about shorties, but take the top one off, loosen the bottom one, swing it down, and then you can get to your um, your sensor. You can unclip it, and there's that. And can't really think of anything else.